بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما ثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we're going to continue with the uh, introduction to this last section in Ibn Ashir uh, which he entitles مبادئ التصوف وحواد الحواد التعرف so the principles of tasawwuf and the things that guide or lead to experience the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are reviewing or going over the 10 uh, essentials of this science from the introduction to the uh, Iqad al-Himam by Ibn Ajiba. So we'll finish that and then uh, <clears throat> mention a few things about the importance of this particular science, ahamiyatu, هذا العلم, and then uh, we'll start with the first verse, was uh, it what min kulli dam in rich taram, tajibu faran mutlaqan wahyan nadam, so repenting from tawbah or repentance. So uh, we'll pick up so. Discussing the ten essentials, so we mentioned several of them last week. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. So the huk, the religious ruling, uh, I don't know if we mentioned that, hukm al-shari' fihi the ruling concerning it. And uh, Imam Ghazali and others say that it's fard ayn. It's incumbent on every individual. So Ibn Ajiba quotes Ibn uh, Imam al-Ghazali. He says, فَقَالَ الْغَزَالِيُّ إِنَّهُ فَرْضُ عَيْنِ إِذْ لَا يَخْلُوا أَحَدٌ مِنْ عَيْبٍ أَوْ مَرَدٍ إِلَّا الْأَنْبِيَاءُ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامِ So he says, uh, Rahimahullah, it's incumbent on every individual <clears throat> because no one is free from spiritual defects and diseases except the prophets, peace be upon them. And as part of our journey to Allah is to rid ourselves of the defects and diseases that may either impede our journey or render us unacceptable when we arrive at our destination. So he says, for this reason, it is absolutely incumbent. Another reason some mention is that ikhlas is a requisite, and we'll come back to that, inshallah, for the acceptability of our actions. And this science is the science that uh, provides us with the means to attain ikhlas or sincerity. And therefore, some argue it is incumbent upon every individual since none of our actions are acceptable without ikhlas. وَقَالَ الشَّاذُلِي Imam Abu al-Hasan al-Shaduli, rahimahullah, may Allah ta'ala have mercy on him. He said, مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَلْغَلْ فِي عِلْمِنَا هَذَا مَاتَ مُسِرًا عَلَى الْكَبَائِرِ وَهُوَ لَا يَشْعُرْ that whoever doesn't uh, delve deeply, immerse himself in this knowledge of ours, will die persisting in the major sins without realizing it. And so how does this science uh, eliminate that? Our, the, one of the absolute foundations of this science is the remembrance of Allah. Responding to the order of Allah, Ya ayyuhalladheena amadu dhkurullah dhikran kathira. O you believers, remember Allah abundantly. Dhikran kathira. Wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. And glorify him in the morning and in the evenings. So, 
amongst the greatest form of uh, dhikr, and there's no weird or litany that any spiritual path recommends except that it includes istighfar, seeking forgiveness of Allah. And one of the fruits of istighfar, the, the more and uh, the, the, in terms of both quality and quantitatively and qualitatively, so the more we make istighfar and the deeper and pure and more sincere our seeking Allah's forgiveness is the finer the degrees of sin that he reveals to us. This is something experienced. And so you'll find sins you are unaware of that, subhanAllah, I'm backbiting. And I didn't even notice it. The more, the finer and finer degrees of sin. So those who don't remember Allah and those who don't engage in seeking Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness, they don't realize their sins, even the major sins. So he says, Mata musirran al kabairi wa la yashur. And so they die and they've persisted in these sins without realizing it. One of the, uh, our uh, forebears and our teachers reminded of one of the greatest afflictions Allah can expose a servant to is preoccupy them with the faults of others and make them oblivious to their own faults. So they're always pointing out what others are doing wrong. And they say uh, the believer is a mirror of his brother or sister. So they're merely seeing those faults, their own faults in those people. But because they don't see them in themselves, they don't address them. And because they don't address them, address them they die carrying them to their grave. And because they carry them to their grave, they meet a law with those sins weighing them down, or the effects of those sins, the ill effects of those sins weighing them down. And Allah give us tawfiq. So others say is, it's not necessarily far ayn if a person uh, has either an, a blessed nature that Allah Ta'ala has pulled them beyond the defects that most people wrestle with, or they've uh, been informally exposed through their companionship, through other uh, means to uh, what they needed to rid themselves of those sins. But in that case, it's not incumbent on them. But some would argue that would be such a rare exception that generally they can say it's far ayn. Wallahu alam wal mustan. Wa amma tasawwuru. Masa'ili. So uh, what its issues, what they encompass, if we were to uh, have an idea concerning their issues, he says, Rahimullah ibn Ajiba, Fahiya ma'rifa tustalahatihi wal kalimati lati tatadawulu bain al qawm. So it's a knowledge of the various jargon and words that circulate amongst the people, meaning the people of this particular science. Khalas, such as sincerity, was sidq and truthfulness, wa tawakkul and trusting in Allah, was zuhud, detaching one's heart from the world. And so not one's body, we live in the world. So but we detach our hearts from it. So we should never think that physical possessions or lack thereof are a sign of the lack of physical possessions or the possession thereof are a sign of zuhud. There's a, a well-known story where someone instructed someone to go to this other city and to go to, there's a very uh, pious man there who's a zahid and seek such and such favor. So we went there and there's this big mansion and so he says, maybe this guy knows who he is. 
And he goes and he says, I'm searching for so-and-so. He said, I'm so-and-so. Uh, so he says, is this your house? He says, yes. So it's a big palatial house, well furnished, etc. cetera. And uh, so when he went back, having uh, executed the responsibility that he was charged with, he said, you said this person was a Zad. I went, he's living in a mansion and it's all decked out. And he says, he said, none of that affects his heart. That doesn't mean anything to him. So you can have the dunya in your hand and long as it's not in your heart, then you can be a Zahid, one who's uh, renounced the world. The world has no effect on his heart, but one who appreciates the, the blessings of Allah. So Allah blessed them with wealth. They give the haqq of zakat and sadaqah and infaq. In fact, we need more people like that who possess great wealth, but not in their hearts. So they give freely to Islamic relief, Syrian relief, etc. cetera. Zaytuna College, <laughs> Islamic relief, Zaytuna College, care, Zaytuna College. So we need more people like that. Uh, Imam Abu Hassan al-Shaduli himself, well, he dressed very nicely, very refined manner. And some, someone, um, and he, he lost his uh, eyesight in his adulthood. He wasn't born blind, but he lost his eyesight. So he couldn't see at that point. So when the man came to him, he perceived that the man was shabbily clad. And so the man says, how, how can you be a Zahid and you, you're dressed in these fine clothes? He says, uh, that's an aspect of my zud. When people see me, they don't think I lead any of their dunya, so they don't offer it to me. But when they see you, they think you need their dunya, so they, are, they give it to you. <laughs> so all this, it's all in how you see things. It's all a sense of perspective. So it's not about possessing or lacking wealth or material possessions. It's about the state of one's heart and the purity of one's heart and what one possesses in their hearts. So a zuhud wal wara scrupulousness, meaning that things that some people consider <clears throat> to be highly encouraged, a person considers to be obligatory. And what some people consider permissible, one they consider highly encouraged. So they go over and beyond the mere requisites of haram and halal. This is the essence of wara. Warida, being pleased with Allah's decree. With taslim, uh, submitting oneself to the path Allah has laid out for one until Allah takes one off of that path. Wal mahabba, <coughs> love, and we'll talk about that momentarily. <coughs> Excuse me. Wal <coughs> fana, uh, so there are many different definitions of that. One is to rid oneself of one's uh, base human characteristic and adorn oneself with uh, godly characteristics to the extent humanly possible. So one isn't, we're not talking about hulul or indwelling or any of those things. We're just talking about ridding oneself of one's awsaf al-bashariya. So one's human characteristics that are, that are base and then adorning oneself with godly characteristics to the extent humanly possible. So you want to be Rahim and you want to be Al Malik, not in the sense of sovereign, that's a, a, a name only fitting for Allah. But Malik, you want to carry yourself with the dignity of a king. And so you don't want to be just debased to the depths of this base popular culture, who is the race to the bottom, who can dress the most shabbily, who can take off the most clothes, who can get the most tattoos, who can uh, color their hair the most, the weirdest color, uh, who can have the wildest carvings in their head, who 
who can have the most uh, avant-garde mohawk, who can, who can uh, be the rudest to adults. Uh, these are some of the milestones of the descent to the bottom that popular culture is unleashing on people. People just act any kind of way. No, we want to be like a king and queens. Uh, so adorning ourselves with, we want to be generous, we want to be knowledgeable, we want to be, we want to, in the proper situation, to be, be strong, to be mighty, to be aziz, but aziz billah, wulillah, wafillah, but to do it for Allah and through Allah and by Allah and, and not for our nafs when the situation calls for it. Uh, so Allah, this is, uh, these are aspects of uh, fana. So we've left and obliterated our base human characteristics and adorned ourselves with godly characteristics. Well, baqa, but and, and uh, a meaning of this, again, there are many meanings consistent with what we've outlined, but we don't allow our efforts to be godly in the, meta, the allegorical sense uh, to allow us not to fulfill our shari obligations. So you have the oxymoronic, uh, arrogant sheikh. That's an oxymoron. Because so the sheikh is too good to just take time to see if someone needs help. So they'll walk past uh, someone who's, they see they're moving their house, they don't offer a hand to help them move. They see the children, they don't take time to just rub the children's head. These are all things the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is an aspect of his baqa and that meaning. So he wasn't, if anyone could have been above the rabble of humanity because of their godliness, in quotations, it would, it would have been the Prophet So you see people, they have their subhan and the marking down the street, Salaamu Alaikum, you're disrupting my dhikr, you lowly peon. So you've met the type. So that person has no portion of what we're discussing here. And so they're gone, and right, they're gone. Uh, it's like the, the people Junaid mentioned when they said, uh, oh, they've arrived. And so some of these people, they think they've arrived at some exalted state with Allah Ta'ala, where they're beyond the common person. And he said, yeah, they arrived, they've arrived to hell. So that, that kind of attitude has nothing to do with this particular science. So he says, uh, that and the essence. So uh, understanding things related to the divine essence to the extent possible. No one will get to the essence of the essence, if you will. Wasifat, the attributes, wal qudra, and Allah Ta'ala's uh, power and how it unfolds in the world and in chronological time, wal hikmah and wisdom, wal ruhaniyat, things we associated with the spirits, wal bashariya and things associated with human nature, wal ka ma'rifati haqiqat al hal, and understanding the reality of passing states, wal wadid, and moments of inspiration. And so one of the studies are the studies of waridat, or those inspirations, those things we can in, be inspired with in their sources. Are they uh, nafsani? Are they uh, emanating from our soul and our nafs in its various stages of development? Are they maliki? Are they angelic? Are they shaitani? Are they satanic? Are they ilahi? Are they divine? So. This is something that's also studied in this particular science. Wal maqam and the stations. So the permanent states or stations rather we want to arrive at. Wa ghayru dhalik and other things along these particular, this particular line. Those are the issues that this science deals with. Masailu. As the, uh, the manzuma, the little poem on the Mabad uh, al-Ashur mentions. And then it's, it's virtue. 
as for its virtue. فَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ أَنَّ مَوْدُعَهُ أَذَّاتُ الْعَالِيَةِ So it's been previously mentioned that it's in the discussion of its subject matter. It deals with the highest essence uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our journey to Allah and those, uh, the attributes of Allah and the essence of Allah. So it deals with Allah. وَهِي أَفْضَلُ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ and anything dealing with Allah is the most virtuous thing, absolutely. Because Allah فَوْقَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَقَبْلَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَبَعْدَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So, it's the absolute most virtuous thing. فَالْعِلْمُ الَّذِي يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهَا أَفْضَلُ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ So the science that's associated with those things associated with Allah is the most virtuous science, absolutely. ta'ala. And in that, in the, the first manifestations, when one is new to this particular science, uh, its first uh, indications deal with the reverence and fear of Allah. وَوَسَطُهُ وَبِوَسَطِهِ عَلَمُ عَمَلَتِهِ and its middle stages deal with dealing with Allah with the very best of etiquette or adab. And its end deals with experiencing the reality of Allah. So it's gradual progression. And all of it deals with Allah. So, from being reverent and, and properly fearing Allah and then gaining good adab and etiquette in terms of how we uh, deal with Allah and how our interaction with Allah is and then finally experiencing the reality of Allah in our lives, which is the essence of ma'rifah. وَأَمَّا نِسْبَتُهُ as for its relationship to other sciences, وَأَمَّا نِسْبَتُهُ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ فَهُوَ كُلِّيٌّ لَهَا وَشَرْطٌ فِيهَا So he says it's something that is uh, encompassing, so I'm intentionally avoiding philosophical language, encompassing all other sciences and a condition for their soundness. إِذْ لَا عِلْمَ وَلَا عَمَلَ, ولا عمل in that there is no knowledge and there is no action except that it's accompanied by orienting ourselves sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we mentioned the definitions last week, one that we mentioned and emphasized, uh, orienting ourselves sincerely to Allah. That's the essence of tasawwuf. And so if someone thinks that it's bid'ah, then mashallah. May Allah help them. But that's the essence of our religion, to orient ourselves sincerely towards Allah because we're journeying to Allah whether we like it or not. Ya ayyuhal insan, ya ayyuhal mu'minun, la ayyuhal ladhina amanu. No, not all you, oh you believers, oh you humans, ya ayyuhal insan, you human being. You are journeying to Allah. You're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Kafir, Atheist. Well, we won't say Kafir. Atheist. Uh, whatever you are, you're journeying to Allah. We're journeying to Allah. And of a surety, you will reach Him. So the issue is what state are we going to be in when we get there? What state are we going to be when we get there? May Allah bless us to be in the very best of states. Uh, so he says, uh, uh, we'll go back. فَالْإِخْلَاصُ And so sincerity is a condition in both knowledge and actions. Sincerity is conditioned in knowledge and actions. And it's, it's, 
it's more important in knowledge than in actions because knowledge is more arrogating than actions. So someone could pray and do tahajjud, and that might not necessarily arrogate them because they witness the effects of their prayer. In the salata tanha anil fahshay wal munkar. And so the prayer wards off indecency and lewdness. So it wards off the indecency of arrogance and the lewdness that arrogance can lead to. But knowledge arrogates and many, many people fail to engage in any practices or actions that ward off the arrogance that knowledge can birth. Like I know and you don't know. And Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are they equal, those who know and those who know not? Of course they're not equal. You lowly surf. But if you hang out to me, with me, I'll teach you. Subhanallah. So people who study need something to beat them down. And tasawwuf is that something. May Allah give us tawfiq. Tayyip. وَأَمَّ فَائِدَةُ As for its uh, benefits, فَتَذِيبُ الْقُلُوبِ is uh, rectifying the heart. وَمَعْرِفَةُ عَلَّامِ الْغُيُوبِ And knowledge of the knower of the unseen. أَوْ تَقُولُ Or you could say, ثَمْرَتُهُ Or its فَائِدَةُ سَقْخَاوَةُ nufus is magnanimity of spirit. So it, it, this knowledge raises a person above pettiness because a person who's focused on Allah and Allah is greater than anything in existence, even the great sun that illuminates our day greater than the universe, greater than anything we can conceive of. When you're focused on Allah, you don't have time for small things. So it's an inoculation against pettiness. So a person who engages in this science, one of its fruits, sakhawatun nufus, so a great generous, magnanimous spirit. And that's why they say, uh, uh, or one of the our akabir in the past is aqbahu qabih sufiyun shahih the most ugly and vilest of all things aqbahu kulli qabih the vilest of all things sufiyun shahih is a miserly sufi because the, one of the fruits of this path is is a generous spirit and magnanimous spirit so stinginess and miserliness in any of its manifestations is something that has absolute need. There's no room for in this particular path. وَسَلَامَةُ sudur And a contented heart. Or contented hearts. So salamatu sudur means that after you know and have knowledge of what's right, you're totally right with it. You have no desire to do the wrong thing. That's what salam to sudur is. Once you know what's right, you have no desire to do what's wrong whatsoever. And, and again, this is indicated by as one of the ends of one's spiritual progression is indicated by the hadith of the Prophet that no one of you truly believes. So their belief remains defective until their very inclination is consistent with what I've brought. And that's salam to sudur. Anything that we learn to be pleasing to Allah, to be right, with Allah, we naturally incline for, for, for it, towards it, and we have no inclination towards the opposite. 
So that's what salam to sudur mean, and that's one of the fruits or benefits of this science. husnul khuluqi ma kulli makhluq. And to have good character in dealing with any created thing. So the good character doesn't just involve our dealings with other people. So he says, wa husnul khuluq ma kulli makhluq. Any created things. So with plants, we, if we don't have a need, we don't break a limb off a plant. Because we leave it intact. Unless there's a hajjah, there's a need. We don't trample on ants. So there's an ant going across the path and just out of mischievous evil, just whack, We walk over the ants. And we know the consequences are the surah naml where the ants and being trampled on are mentioned. Just by way of example, we, we have husnul khuluq, ma kullil makhluq. Every created thing we have good character with. So those are the, the 10 essentials uh, of this particular science. Then something we read, inshallah, because after mentioning them, uh, he says, uh, Ibn Ajiba, I think this is very, very important. He said, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ الَّذِي ذَكَرْنَاهُ لَيْسُ هُوَ أَلَّقَلَّقَةُ بِاللِّسَانِ That this knowledge that we've been uh, mentioning is not to be found in the, the rambling of the tongue. So this isn't... Uh, Philosophical, a philosophical endeavor that through our discussions will attain to its benefits. No, it, it, it's not to be found in the prattle and rambling of the tongue. <laughs> but it's taken from people who have tasted its reality. In other words, they've experienced what it's all about. That's what it's taken from. It's not taken from conversations and et cetera. It's not taken from books. It's not taken from uh, reading Ibn Arabi. That can enhance it or, or Ibn Farid's poems. Do you know people that do that? They read Ibn Arabi, they read Ibn Farid, and they're, they're total fusaq. They're morally corrupt because they're, they're going off, they're, they're chasing a red herring. They're going on after the wrong thing. That's not it. It's taken from the people of Adwaq. It's not obtained by just batting opinions back and forth, hearsay. You know, I heard it's like this. No, no, no. No, nah, you, you heard from the wrong sheikh. It's really like this. Because my sheikh, he's the sheikh of shuyukh. And the sheikh of shuyukh. He knows what it's all about. No, no, man, you have to, you have to get down with Sheikh so-and-so, because Sheikh so-and-so, he's the, he's the shaky Sheikh. And so you won't be shaky until you get down with the shaky Sheikh. So qila wa qal, it's not taken from that. And so he says, وَإِنَّمَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْ خِدْمَةِ rijal. Rather, it's taken from serving the men and women, rijal yani, can include women in this context. Because it's, it's jamu, jamu taksir. It can include women. That's why the khawarij, I shouldn't go there. So I'm going to get in trouble. I'll get in trouble. Sisters, please understand. This is the pre-modern world. The sisters, we'll see you afterwards. But they say the khawarij, we'll call the khawarij and not the kharijin or kharijun, which is kharij, or kharijin, or kharijin, kharijiyun, is because they, they were not acting in a manly fashion. So we leave it at that. Sisters, I'll take my lumps after. How dare you? But, so, but I'm, I'm doing that to say that this can also include serving the women of this path. There were many notable women. Imam Ahmed, who the most conservative strain in Sunni Islam attributes itself to, 
Imam Ahmed and his companions would go to visit the, the women uh, renunciants, for lack of a better word, the women ascetics around Baghdad, and they go and just sit in their presence and weep, and weep. There, there's been women of incredible stature in this ummah in terms of their spiritual states, and great women of learning also. Was Aisha bin Abdul Hadi and others, who was one of the shaykh or shaykhat of Ibn Hajar Asqalani, Amir al Mu'minin fil Hadith, Sahib al Fathul Bari, Yuqalu Anhu Fathul Bari, La Hijrata Bad al Fath. Once you attain the Fathul Bari, you don't make Hijra to another book. And his one of his primary teachers in hadith was Aisha bint Abdul Hadi. He took the uh, hadith al musalsal bil awwaliyah from her. Rahimun yarhamum rahman. And it said he read upwards to 100 books in ilm with her. So there have been great, great women spiritual, uh, both in the spiritual and the intellectual realms in this ummah. So serving them is where you take this knowledge from. وَصُحْبَتِ أَهْلِ kamal And keeping the company of the people who have completed this journey. أَهْلُ kamal And we mentioned last week, the Sahaba, they're not called darisin, muta'alimin, talibin, tulab, talaba, muta'alimin. They're not called any of that, which we would say students. They're called Sahaba because they kept the company of the Prophet Sallallahu and keeping his company and even looking at him or being gazed upon by him, their lives were changed forever. And as a result of that change in their lives, history was changed. And he concludes by saying in this particular section, we mentioned this last week, Wallahi ma aflaha man aflaha illa bi suhbati man aflaha. He says, I swear by Allah, the one who has succeeded in this path, ma aflah, has not succeeded, illa except bi suhbati, with the keeping the company, man aflah, of one who has succeeded. And so this is where it's taken from. It's not taken from books, it's not taken from deep philosophical conversation. It's not taken from any of those things. It's taken from the people who've experienced it. It's taken from serving those people. It's taken from keeping the company of those people. May Allah give us tawfiq. So we'll, we'll uh, stop here and uh, with, with this Mabad uh, al-Ashr. And then we'll summarize that aspect of the introduction before moving to Tawbah by mentioning the importance of this particular science, Ahamiyat al-Tasawwuf. The importance of tasawwuf. Uh, so our actions generally can be divided into two parts. So the actions of the body and the actions of the heart. So amal al jismiya wal amal al amal al qalbiya qalbiya. So the actions of the body and the actions of the heart, and then those can be divided into two parts. Al-awamir wal-nawahi. Al-awamir wal-nawahi. So in terms of the bodily action, the awamir, for example, qim salah establish regular prayer, pay the zakat, uh, make the hajj if you're able to do so, uh, etc. These are fast Ramadan. So these are commandments associated with our bodily action. And then we have the prohibitions associated with our body, the actions. So don't kill, don't steal, don't commit fornication, don't engage in riba. So these are the nawahi or the manhiyat. And for a, 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 a very exhausted list of those and their proof from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is to be found in the Kitab Riyad al Salihin, the Gardens of the Righteous of Imam al Nawawi. So, in the second half of Riyad al Salihin, there's an extensive list, and each, each particular manhi 
anything that's prohibited has its, its dalil, so its foundation. And Riyadh al-Saliheen is considered in many uh, spiritual uh, paths to be the, the book governing the bodily actions in terms of what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Tayyip. Then you have, okay, you have the al-amal uh, al-qalbiyya, the actions of the heart. And so we have commandments governing our hearts. So the first and foremost, to believe in Allah. To have sincerity, ikhlas. To be content and pleased with Allah's decree, rida. We mentioned some of these in the masail, previously issues. To be truthful, sidq. Ya ayyuhalladhina amunu taqullah, to have taqwa, wa kunu ma'as-sadiqeen. And keep yourself in the presence of truthful people. So taqwa and sidq, khushu'a, so to have reverence, tawakkul, dependence on Allah. And some of the, and many others of course, these are just uh, illustrative. The nawahi, the prohibitions, so kufr, the negation of iman. Disbelief, nifaq, hypocrisy, the negation of sincerity, uh, kibr, arrogance, the way of shaitan. So this is the, the way of shaitan. When the hadith of, of brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, that we were doing it after Salat al dhuhr sometimes when I'm there to pray it. La tahasidu wa la tanajashu wa la tabagadu wa la tadabaru, et cetera, et cetera. The only thing repeated is don't look down or dis demean, be mean your fellow Muslim. So al Muslim, aqul Muslim, la yadlimuhu wa la yakhduluhu wa la yakhibuhu wa la yakhiru. At taqwa hahuna wa yushir ila sadri thalath marat. So the Muslim is the brother or sister of their fellow Muslim. He neither oppresses him or her. He doesn't abandon him or her. He doesn't lie to him or her. He doesn't look down or, or despise. Well, doesn't despise, demean him or her. It's sufficient evil. You don't have to do anything else. You've done enough. It is sufficient for a person to have done enough evil and yahkira aqahul Muslim to look down or be mean their fellow Muslim. Why? Because this is the way of shaitan. He looked down on Adam. He made me from this fire. Look how it rises up. It's beautiful. Look at that orange in there. Look at that blue. Look at those shades of nice colors in there. And look how it rises up towards the heavens. And look at this clay, it's stuck on the earth and it's flowing downhill. Fire goes up, clay goes down. Fire has these beautiful colors, clay is black. I'm better. That's what you think. So it's a, it's a kibr is a, is a vile characteristic, and that's why this doubly emphasized, wala yahkiru, bihasbimrin a person's done enough evil, they don't have to do anything else. You don't have to go out, steal, fornicate, rob somebody, snatch an old lady's pocketbook. No, you've already done enough to encompass all of that by looking down on and despising your fellow Muslim or your fellow human being, for that matter. Now let me give us tawfiq. Riyat, another of the manhiyat, al-qalbiya, is uh, showing off, or sum'ah, and broadcasting our good deeds, which is a companion of showing off. Hasad, jealousy, and that's a big one. The first one the Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith of brotherhood, sisterhood, la tahasadu. Don't envy one another, because again, that's satanic characteristic. He envied Adam. They should be prostrating to me, not him. I'll show he's unworthy of prostrating to. So he, the, this is a satanic trait. Gurur, self-deception, to be deceived concerning oneself. 
So these are categories of actions. Al-Amal al-Qalbiya wa minha al-Awamir wa nawahi Wal-Amal al-Qalbiya wa minha al-Awamir wa nawahi The actions of the heart are more important than the action of the body. Because without a sound heart, none of those actions are acceptable. So at the end of the hadith, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنْ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنْ What does the Prophet say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَرِ مُضَغَاتًا إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَرُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَرُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Verily, in the body there is an organ. If it is sound, the entire body is sound. And if it is corrupt, the entire body is corrupt. Verily, it is the heart. So the heart will command the body to corrupt things. The corruption of the heart will render the actions of the body unacceptable. So may Allah give us tawfiq. Also, we can point out that Allah, the, we mentioned earlier, إِنَّمَ الْعَمَالُ bin niyat. Actions are based on their intention. And the intention is only sound, and therefore the action is only sound if it is sincere. And so sincerity is something this science deals with. So which again indicates that the actions of the heart take priority over the actions of the body. Uh, Allah, Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفِرُ مَالُ وَلَا بَانُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A day, no amount of wealth and children will be of any benefit. The only one benefited that day will be the one who comes before Allah with a rectified heart. And so this science is the science that, uh, whose objective is the rectification of the hearts. Uh, so Allah doesn't look at your ex external forms And amongst the external forms are the external acts of worship So salah has an external form Fasting has an external manifestation Hajj definitely, which is going on now, has an external manifestation that people can see, but Allah doesn't look at that. People see you packing up, they see you going, getting on the plane, waving goodbye. Some people, when you get there, they see you, I'll meet you in Mecca. Okay, it's a deal. But Allah doesn't look at things that people see. Allah looks at things people can't see. People can see our wealth, the manifestation of our wealth. Allah doesn't look at that. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ Allah looks at your hearts and then the actions that emanate from the heart, the sincere actions that emanate from the heart. So, again, the heart is what Allah is looking at. Is the heart sincere? Is it truthful? Is it content? This is what, this is what Allah Ta'ala is looking at. So, this is uh, a science that many say has priority over the other science because it is foundational for the soundness of everything else we do in our devotional life. Faith encompasses, encompasses 70 some odd branches. The highest of those branches is to proclaim there is no God but Allah. And the lowest branch is to remove the harmful thing from the path. And shyness is a branch of faith. So again, indicating our deen, it, it concerns itself with our aqidah. La ilaha illallah. With our sharia, our bodily actions, imatatul adha an it tariq. And it concerns itself with our internal states. Wal hayau shu'batun min al iman. In the hadith of Jibreel, the Prophet he asked about 
what we should believe. He is asked about rather what we should do. فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ Islam. Al-Islam, kada wa kada wa kada. So inform me about Islam. Islam is that you do this, 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 and this. فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ iman Inform me about faith. Faith is that you believe. Kada wa kada wa kada. Al-Imanu and tu'mina billahi. That you believe in Allah, etc. And then he asks, فَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ ihsan Inform me about ihsan. So he didn't give a list now. Al-Islam, A, B, C, D, E. Al-Iman, A, B, C, D, E. Al-Ihsan, just a state. And ta'abuda Allaha ka'annaka tarahu fa'illam takun tarahu fa'innuhu yara. So the, he's describing an internal state that you worship Allah as if you see him. And if you fail to see him, be mindful that he observes you. So this is a state of being. So our religion concerns ourselves itself with our state. And then he asked the fourth question, فَخْبِرْنِ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ He asked a fourth question, inform me of the hour. And what did the Prophet say? The one being asked has no more knowledge than one who is asking. I don't know. Now we have people they say they know. Definitely we can see signs. They say they saw signs in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over fourteen hundred years ago. Signs a lot clearer than the signs we see now. So we can interpret the signs like, uh, you know, the strange weather and the strange behavior of people. You see people acting as if they're all drunk, but they're not drunk. That's how people are acting. We can interpret the signs. But they saw something that needed no interpretation. The hour is growing near and the moon is split in half. How about that for a sign? Now you look up and the moon is split down the middle. That would be a lot more powerful than climate change, crazy people, disappearing fish, which is all prophesied. Well, how about the moon split in half? That was 1,400 years ago. And so it's getting closer. We don't know when. Some people say they know when. The last group that did that a couple years ago, the, the, the guy in his little coat that is the end, disappointed. Jehovah, Jehovah Witness, 1914, 1976, the end. They were disappointed. And they lost a lot of money. They had to reprint all of their books <laughs> twice. I know I have family members who are Jehovah Witnesses. Don't hold that against me. No, I'm just kidding. Hope they never see this. <laughs> I apologize to them. Allah Mustan. But seriously, we don't know. We know it's close, but we just keep working. We keep working. We keep working. Tayyip. So, uh, just one final ref. Allah Ta'ala tells us, Ahumma Sura Rasulillah, وَمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Don't come close to uh, lewd, indecent things. Both those in the external manifestations, fornication, theft, lewd and decent behavior, and those internal fawahish, dishonesty, untrustworthiness, uh, cowardice, etc. Don't come near any of these or these. And the latter, the ma'batan, 
again, is far, far more dangerous than the former. Because there, there are situations, right, where the external, we mentioned, al-amal al-jismiya, al awami wa nawahir There are times when the awamir can be suspended in certain circumstances. There are times when the nawahi, don't eat pork, don't drink wine, can be suspended. To save your life, you can eat pork, you can drink wine. But there's never a time when the internal commandments and prohibitions and al-awamir wa nawahi muta'alliqa bil qulub wa nufus can be suspended. When those associated in the, with our internal states can be suspended. Your truthfulness can never be suspended. Your, your, well, there are, there are conditions, but in your heart. If, if your tongue, which is the external act, it can be suspended, right? To save your life, to save your property from an oppressor. But in your heart, it can't be suspended. And the uh, sincerity, iman, belief, courage, etc., those are never suspended, which indicates that they are of higher magnitude uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are things we should definitely uh, be uh, cognizant of, checking the time. So from, from that introduction, we'll enter into the first line of the poem. So we mentioned, he says, uh, Ibn Ashir, وَتَوْبَةٌ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمٍ أَذَّمٍ يُجْتَرَمْ تَجِيبُ فَوْرًا مُطْلَقًا وَحْيًا نَدَمْ So repenting from every sin that we might perpetrate is an obligation to be executed immediately. And one of its foundations is expressing remorse for the sin. So you want to say, I repent, and we take it as a light matter, and we have no remorse. So in the, in, in the courts of this world, we have a lawyer right here. If, if a, a particular criminal expresses great remorse for the crime he or she has committed, the judge lightens the sentence, right? If they have no remorse in it, and we're going to give you the full sentence because you have absolutely no remorse, talk. Because there's no remorse. And so in the real court, the real judge if, uh, has made it required for us to have remorse for sin we might, con uh, might commit, and that's a, a condition of repentance. It's an absolute condition for repentance. So repentance is to return, to return. And in this case, amongst other things, to return to the state of purity that we were in before we committed the sin by appealing to Allah to wipe out the effect of the sin. So the sin has been committed, but it's the effect of our good deeds and the effect of our bad deeds that we look forward to or we dread. The lasting reward of the good deeds that you do are the best thing to look forward to with your Lord as in terms of a reward and the best thing to hope for. So the effect is wiped out. The sin has been perpetrated, but the effect of the sin doesn't go forward. And that's the effect of toba. Toba repentance is a, something that opens up the gateway for not only our return to the state of purity that we were in, but our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our forefather Adam. He sinned. Right? And he was cast out of Jannah. But what did he do? He learned words. Adam turned in repentance. 
So he was, he was open and receptive to learning those uh, things that benefit his soul, and amongst them, to repent. And he repented, and Allah accepted his repentance. Allah is most accepting of repentance, most merciful. And so that opened up the path for Adam's return to Jannah, where his journey began. And his return opens up the path for all of our ability to return to Jannah, to paradise. And that's why it's very, very important to understand words. So, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا So Allah Ta'ala taught Adam the meanings of all things, the meaning of words, the meanings of things, the meanings of words. فَتَعَلَّمَ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ He learned words from his Lord. So there's objective meanings that correspond to objective reality. And we should be very, very careful with new ways of seeing things that seek to destroy meaning. This is so. Some of you are in graduate programs right here, GTU. And you study Darida and his whole project to destroy meaning, to deconstruct meaning. And some people uh, think it's harmless because it helps me understand world and power relationships and hierarchies and privilege and, and, and it, it helps me to avoid essentializing and you have the whole gamut of ideas and you accept a conceptual universe that makes faith impossible. That makes the ideas that we're talking about here impossible to conceive of because they've been divorced from the context that gives them meaning. So don't fall into that trap. And then, then you, people proceed down that path and they reach a crisis and resolve it in many different ways. Some people resolve it by just leaving Islam and joining the rest of the people who have left their respective faiths. Some people resolve it by becoming a secular Muslim. Some people resolve it by becoming a schizophrenic Muslim. Like, I know this is one reality that my academic studies is dealing with. And this is another reality that my religious studies are dealing with. That's called schizophrenia. There's only one reality. There's only one God. There's only one true path. It has many manifestations, many lanes, a better word. The one path has many lanes, but it's one path. May Allah give us tawfiq. So Allah tells us, uh, So turn to Allah all together. O oh, you believers, in order that you will succeed. To hear la'allah has the mean of ta'aleel. So turn to Allah all together, O oh, you believers, in order that you will succeed. This is one of the most emphatic statements in the Quran. So Allah could have just said, Watubu well, ilallah. Watubu is plural. Right? It's already plural. Taba yatubu. He turned and repented. Taba tatubu. She turned and repented. Repent. Wa tub. Anta. You are one person. Repent. Tubi anti. Okay. Time to wake up. <laughs> but tubu is already plural. So it could have just been tubu ilallah. All of you repent to Allah. Wa tubu ilallahi jami'an. They already said all of you. Jami'an. So it emphasizes all of you. This is your collective duty. Ayyuhal mu'minun. 
oh, you believers, so plural again, but specifying, and specifically you believers. لَعَلَّكُمْ In order that you تُفْلِحُونَ will be successful. So this is just emphasizing the gravity and magnitude of repentance. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا Turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. And sincere, one that is full of remorse. And so the first thing that Ibn Ashir mentions, وَحْيَ النَّدَمْ وَتَوْبَةٌ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمٍ يُجْتَرَمْ تَجِبُ فَارًا مُطْلَقًا وَحْيَ النَّدَمْ And so this is really the, the, the remorsefulness that I violated the covenant I've taken with Allah. I've transgressed against the limits set by Allah. This should full, fill a believer with remorse. So we'll stop and leave a little time for questions. Let's relate what was related from Al-Hasan. Su'il Al-Hasanu and Tawbot in Nasuh. Hasan was asked about this sincere repentance. Faqahiyya nadamun bil qalb. It's remorse in the heart. Wal istighfarun bil lisan. And it's seeking Allah's forgiveness with the tongue. Wa tarkun bil jawarih. And it's... Uh, leaving off the action, the sinful action with one's limbs. So it's a remorse in the heart, just deep regret for violating this transgressing in our relationship with Allah and is seeking Allah's forgiving, forgiveness with the tongue, refraining from the action, pulling back from the action with the heart. وَإِدْمَارٌ أَلَّا يَعُودَ إِلَيْهِ أَبَدًا and having uh, internalizing in the depths of our subconscious, even beyond our consciousness, our subconscious, that will never return to this sin again. We might slip, but we are absolutely committed to never returning to the sin again. And that's the essence of Tawbah. And the other, and Ibn Ashir and subsequent verses, which we'll deal with three or four of them next time, inshallah, will uh, go into some of these. So if we can just keep that with us, if we could take one takeaway in turn of, terms of repentance, just take what Al Hassan said. So, Al Hassan and Tawbat al Nasuh. And what did he say? That it is, he anadamun bil qalb. It's remorse in the heart. It's the kfarun bil lisan. And it's seeking Allah's forgiveness with our tongue. Wa tarkun bil jawarih. And leaving off the actions with our limbs. Wa idmarun alla ya'uda ilayhi abada. And making, convincing, convicting ourselves will never return to it. He just, alla ya'uda ilayhi. He didn't say abada. I said abada. So don't put abada. Attribute it to Hassan. May Allah give you tawfiq. So we have a little time for questions, comments. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban. Clarifications. May Allah give us all tawfiq. May Allah elevate your stations. May Allah open the gateways of Jannah before all of us. May Allah bless us in this world and the next. So if there's no questions. There's some comments, questions not. from online if it's okay. Well, Mahdi has a question here before we go online. Tafadda. Oh, it's Ibn Ashir. The Maliki Faqih, jurist, uh, Murshid al Mu'in. So the first section is an Aqidah, and then the bulk of it, the middle, not middle in terms of proportion, is overwhelming. Uh, the overwhelming uh, bulk of the text deals with the uh, uh, Fard Ain, and then the last section is Mambadi uh, Tasawwuf, Wa Hawadi Ta'aruf. So Murshid al Mu'in is available online. You can go to Lamp Post. Uh, this is Abdul Ali's, Abdul Ali's class. I'm just pinch hitting for him until he gets back from Hajj with his wife. Uh, he has a translation and the full Arabic text on his Lamp Post website that I would refer, refer everyone to. Naam, Harun, Rashid. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, first, we have salams coming salam. to you all from Istanbul, from Germany, New Zealand, Rio Allah. de Janeiro, Tunisia, Allah. California, and elsewhere. And we have no two. Susan. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Marhaban, <laughs> California. What's up? Salam alaikum. What's up? <laughs> Turkey. No Susan. <laughs> Indonesia. Salamat hari raya. In nice. a few days, a few days. Now, so, what's so, the question? Helen? So we have two questions. Um, the first is advice on how to constantly orient our hearts to Allah most glorious and high in all that we think and do. And the second question was, or is, could you tell us about the difference between self-respect and kibber? Self-respect and kibber? Yes, sir. None. So one thing is, in terms of constantly orienting ourselves, and I'm, I forgot to mention, one of the fa'idah of this knowledge, in addition uh, to what was mentioned, is mahabbatullah, is the love of Allah. Because, one of, again, one of the states we're described of in terms of being believers, those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah than their love for anything else. And, and so it's a process in terms of that constant uh, vigilance, that constant attachment to Allah in one's heart. This is something that comes over time. And... One, when, when the love is there and the love is sincere and the love is true, then there's no room in our heart for anyone else. It's like some people who are married and they love their spouse so much they would never even think of someone else. If, some, if they're married to a poor man, but this sister, she loves her poor husband to death. She just, if a rich man came, you know, you should divorce that poor bum and and come with me you can have yachts you could have you could have houses all over the world we got a condo in istanbul right on the bosphorus you could have a jet she say but if i can't have all that and not have my poor husband that wouldn't mean anything in fact get out of my face you bum there's no room for anyone else <clears throat> he could bring all the money in the world. He could bring the world itself. There's no room. So, and even more so, when the love of Allah fills the heart, there's no room for anything else. There's no room for any distractions. The dunya, the current events, the affairs, they don't distract the person. As we said, they have their shar'an obligations to alleviate the suffering, to relieve people from the oppression. But, those, but that doesn't divorce them from the, the, the attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's a process. It comes through dhikr. That's why the dhikr is so important. The remembrance of Allah, the constant remembrance of the beloved is something that deepens the love. It comes through the company of people who themselves love Allah. A person is on the religion of their companion. Let everyone consider well the company they keep. So being in the company of people who love Allah helps to pull people up to that state. Uh, so those are just a couple things. Uh, there are many more, but as we go on, inshallah, we can. Repentance, again, not allowing ourselves to be burdened with sin. So this frees us and liberates us and creates the, the spiritual and psychic space to fill with the love of Allah. So if, if we're burdened with sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who don't have sin. And that's why Allah ta'ala says so he doesn't love people who sin, uh, who don't sin. So a condition for the love of Allah is that you don't sin. No, the condition for the love of Allah is that you remove the traces of sin. And so a verse we could have mentioned, but I forgot to mention because I didn't write it down to remind myself is, Allah loves those who constantly repent. Tawwabin, not ta'ibina, tawwabin, which means what? They have a lot of sins but they make sure they efface the effects of those, the sin. 
And so what does that lead to? The love of Allah. And what does the love of Allah lead to? No space in the world for those distractions. So that's how I would answer that question. What was the second question, sir? Oh, kibber and self-respect. Uh, self-respect is rooted in a sense of pleasure that one is conformed to the lawful things and one has done something pleasing to Allah. So one's pleasure is a function of Allah's pleasure and not the aggrandizement of the nafs. And so Allah mentions in the Quran, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ قَيْرٌ مِّنْ مَا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, in the grace of Allah and in His mercy, and this let them rejoice. So the self-respect is and the, the joy that is associated with it is connected to the grace and mercy of Allah. So it's a function of the grace and mercy of Allah. Kibr is associated with that which constitutes rebellion towards Allah. So you might say, well, I did a good thing and I, I was proud that I did my salat but it led you to look down on the ones who didn't do 20 rakats of tar tarawih every single night of Ramadan. And so that's haram. Muslim. And for this reason, uh, the ulama, they mention that a sin that births greater awareness and remorse and turns one towards Allah is better than a good deed, a, de a devotional act that pushes one towards arrogance. So I hope that clarifies it. Did that make sense? What do you guys think? Yani, inshallah. Yes, self-deception again, this is a satanic trait to think you're, you're something that you're not. And usually, uh, giving yourself uh, more, not more credit than you deserve, but elevating yourself to a station you don't deserve. And so now humanity is deceived. People think they're God. You know, that can't be a part of our religion because that would be homophobic. So who are you to say what God's religion should be? I'm not saying hating on people, but people just dismiss whole things uh, or unqualified, you know. Uh, uh, the, that, that, that would be oppression. Uh, there's no oppression, the haqqillah. What, what is the definition of oppression? What's the definition of oppression? Dhul, yes. To usurp the, the rights or property of others. To usurp the right or property of others. How could Allah oppress when everything belongs to Him? By definition, oppression is haram. Uh, it's impossible for Allah. But Allah imposes obligations on Himself in terms of things He promises He won't do. So, so Ya Ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I made it forbidden for myself. And I made it forbidden amongst you. Don't oppress one another. So Allah imposes rights on himself, but we can't impose rights on Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some people do. Allah can't do this. Allah would never do that. And since this or that happened in the world, Allah can't be real according to my definition. So, gurur uh, is to uh, uh, put yourself in a station or assume a station or a station or status greater than what you could lawfully and rightfully claim. And tawada is the opposite, is lowering yourself beneath the station you could rightfully claim. And so Adam السلام, humbled himself and he was therefore able to repent. And Iblis arrogated himself. So 
What was his, his because of his gurur? And so he's the self-deceived and he's also the deceiver. So he said, no, I should be the one they prostrate to. I'm better than him. Based on whose definition? Allah Ta'ala's? Or based on his own assessment of the situation? They should prostrate to me. I'm better than him. So he assumed a station that he had no claim to. Allah ordered the angels to prostrate to Adam. Sajdatu tashrif wala sajdatu al-ibadah. A prostration of honor, not a prostration of worship. But Iblis said, no, they should prostrate to me. So Allah al-Musta'an. So we have to stop here because there's another class. I have to get back to my board meeting. May Allah give you all tawfiq. May Allah give us all tawfiq. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless your families. May Allah bless your children. May Allah bless your parents. May Allah ta'ala bless your friends. May Allah ta'ala bless us. If we said anything unbecoming, inaccurate, or offensive, it's from our own limitations and human frailties and failures and shortcomings. And if we said anything beneficial, it's from Allah ta'ala's grace and favor and mercy and guidance. May Allah ta'ala make our liqa, our meeting, a source of mutual benefit and good. Subhanak Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman wa amalan mutqabila khalisan li wajhik al-kareem. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa an nastawfiruka wa natubu ilayk wal asr inna al-insana la fi khusr illa alladhin amun wa amlu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi